to allow for ease of integration and rapid development. We only have two year development cycle, so it's a lot shorter than most regular satellites. <coughs> uh, here's a slide that's basically making your system level requirements. Um, there's quite a bit, so we we'll point out a couple of the most important ones. Um, as I said earlier, the standardized mechanical and hardware and software interfaces are, is basically our uh, most important requirement uh, to allow rapid integration and development of something with the satellite. Um, another is that we should be able to maintain simultaneous operation of all instruments uh, for a 90-minute uh, orbital cycle. And basically, the interfaces should be uh, all also standardized. So all communications connectors should be standardized via 25-pin uh, connectors. Um, moving on, this is the overall system block diagram of our satellite. Now, it's a little much, so basically, uh, let me point your attention to this mock-up. If you look inside, it's kind of like a giant Lego cube, which means that every subsystem is housed in its own compartment. Um, because we have isolated subsystems, uh, this allows us basically to build sort of a satellite that we can, uh, the goal is to build a satellite that we can plug and play together. And hence, we have a base main computer, which is depicted by this blue right here. Um, this blue is basically the command kind of like the um, On this side right here, we have the mobile computer. It's, it's a single board computer running the Linux operating system. And it's going to be doing the majority of the data processing. Um, in the middle here, we have the central routing queue. The central routing queue is basically how we solve the whole wire harnessing problem. One queue that's responsible for connecting the interface to all the subsystems, and then passing that connection off to the single board computer. Uh, the central routing queue has an FPGA router. And uh, basically, all communications on this bus right here happens at the physical layer, or what's known as mobile differential signal, or LDMS. Um, and uh, of course, they'll talk about the hardware a little bit. Uh, low voltage differential signaling was picked because it is a very low power, um, noise resilient system. It's going to be in a high noise environment, so it's going to be quality. And um, also, one more thing to point out is modularity of this design. We basically have um, a smaller command and data handling. Uh, segment in every smaller subsystem, and the subsystem is represented here. Uh, this microcontroller module is a subsystem level uh, command and data handling. And what that allows us to do is take control, and basically it's, it's a weak computer, but it provides this isolated, inter uh, isolated system, um, and uh, basically a path to talk to the main computer. And um, a couple of things I'll just point out is that the oral imager, which is basically a camera that's going to be pointed down and taking pictures of the high uh, latitude uh, of the planet is basically it's connected to the main computer of the USB connection and the communication subsystems that are on its 4.2 or 45 or actually how to do it. Now I'm going to hand it off to Adrian Walk, who's going to go over a little bit of the hardware. Hello, I'm Adrian, as you said. So basically, in the screen, I'm just going to go a little more in depth with the different hardware that we were talking about a little earlier. Right up here, you can see this is our SPC module, which this is the RCOM Viper SPC, so this is the main computer. Um, this right here is an interface module for the SPC to get on the LDS bus. Um, it basically just has an interface to the GPIO ports and the communication ports of the Viper, and then it transforms it to the LDS signal to get it on the communication bus. Um, over here is what we call the blood bus module, which is the multi bus data bus. Um, right now, it's in its in its breadboard stage, so it's an FPGA, which will be able to um, transform the signal and everything to whichever instrument that we want to talk to. And then what select lines are asserted. And then right here is the microcontroller module, which is um, which is the system level interface between the bus and each instrument. Um, a little more in depth of what's in each of these. The Viper consists of um, uh, Intel PSA2. Basically, it connects up to the, to the SPC module, interface module, that I said, and then it gets onto the, onto the MUD bus through a 25 pin connector. Uh, it's responsible for arbitrating the bus and the other command pulling each instrument. Then we have the microcontroller module. We are utilizing a prescaling CNIS 12 to 56 microcontroller. Um, he basically shows this because we all have a lot of familiarity with it because of the forces at the end and everything. Uh, we have three different Ways, uh, to control the power because we have either 5 volts power supply, 12 volts, or negative 12 volts. And so with these relays, we're able to control what instruments are on, turn them off, you know, supply the power. And, and then we have the LDS transfers to transport from the LDS signal into the TTL or whatever. Um, this is a little more depth of the mud bus. As you can see, it's just a basic multiplexer, demultiplexer. 
we have the data from any of the movie clubs, so we have the select lines coming in. Uh, we use three select lines, which means that we can use up to eight different instruments, and then we can get the parts in there. And then we get the data back, which goes through the box back, so that we can just have one line. Um, we're using an Actel AX250 uh, FPGA. We wrote the one there well. Um, using this, this technology, we decided to do this because it allows for point to point communication, which makes it easier to just kind of put an instrument on and you know, it avoids bus collisions with data and everything. So that's a simple round of And then I'm going to hand it off to Peter now, he's going to talk more about the software. Good afternoon. Um, I'm just going to give you a brief overview on the software that we use to support the hardware that we've already discussed. Um, what you see here is a software diagram for the software that goes on the central routing or excuse me, the uh, SPC. Um, it's basically controlled by the scheduling modular, which will house a lookup table that's uh, generated by engineers at the ground station and uploaded during transmission. The polling module will contain information about the commands and time stamping information about when the commands will be sent, information will be sent to. Um, the scheduling module will then send out the commands to the various other um, modules we have on board and also to the subsystems on the bus. Um, one of the main components we used, uh, we've actually complete, completed me, for the senior design project is the polling module, um, which is displayed in the room in the middle there. The polling module is responsible for actually sending out send data commands to all of the subsystems and collecting the data. Um, so it'll send a command through the communication module, which will then handle all the protocol and then store all the data within the system data. We've also completed for this senior design our system clock module, which handles the one hertz clock to help synchronize all the time stamps. Um, the lighter colored modules are the ones that will be completed over the summer by other undergraduate engineers as part of the USAP project, but we did not plan to go as they were not part of the actual specification. Um, what you see here is an overview of our microcontroller software. Um, in blue, again, is the command and data handling units, and in green, what you see is the subsystem software. So the command and data handling unit is more or less controlled by um, interrupt-driven routines mostly handled by the system module. The system module will contain our, will handle all of the housekeeping data, system state information, and uh, also the clocks. Uh, the communication drivers will handle all of the communication with the other systems and with the SPC. And all of the interaction between everyone is handled with interrupts. Um, we've also have access to all the hardware on the microcontroller. Specifically everything that we don't use will be accessible by the subsystem uh, its own use. Um, now I'm going to introduce you to Aaron, he's going to talk to you a little bit about the testing. Hi everyone, I'm Aaron. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, our functional tests. Um, so this is our basic setup here. You see on the left, we have our uh, SPC and breadboard. Um, in the middle is our Modbus routing module with the Actel FPGA, as we talked about. We have two instruments here. This bottom one is the one we saw earlier. Uh, it's our PCD, which is the microcontroller in the middle. And up here we have another uh, microcontroller on a developed board that converts from Oracle. Um, so basically, you can see uh, we have our lines here going into the router. The select lines will tell the router which subsystem you want. So basically for our test, we use the single board computer to send commands to the different microcontrollers. Uh, the microcontrollers then responded by sending us data. Um, both microcontrollers were hooked up to separate engine generators, 